And now we come to the second question. What are those other things? What, what keeps this from being alive or called life and these from being called alive? Well, let, let's make a little list, okay? For those of you who want to talk about this stuff to your friends. Certainly, we said that order. Order is important in life. But now, you know, when I talk to my students out and I say, well, okay, describe life to me. Guess what the first thing is they say? They say, something is alive if it moves. Is that what you were just thinking? I know that's what you were just thinking, right? See, it's alive. It moved. And now you got to start thinking like scientists, okay? And welcome to science. Because the ability to move is sometimes, I mean, do trees move? Does that mean trees aren't alive? I've never seen a tree go down to the stream to drink water, have you? They don't move, the wind blows them. So be careful about what you think sometimes. Think like scientists. Now, we're going to get to movement, but movement is another whole story that really relates to something else that's going to be about fourth on my list. To me, the very after order, the ability to reproduce. Now, does that mean sterile organisms are not living? Well, of course not, okay? Um, they're, they're, and that's the other thing my students always say when I give them this on their list. They say, oh, what about, you know, mom, people who can't have babies, they're alive. Well, this is not what I'm talking about here, okay? What I am talking about is at the cellular level or the organismal level, there, are, there is the ability to reproduce. And even more importantly, lower than the cellular level. You guys ever heard of DNA? I think you have, okay? Everybody's heard of DNA. Um, it's amazing how much we've learned about DNA in your lifetimes. Um, when I went to high school, it was the, the first year they ever taught about DNA in high schools. It had just, uh, well, let's see, Watson and Crick published their paper in the early 50s. I was in high school uh, in 66. I was a freshman in high school. And um, it was the first year they were teaching about DNA in high schools. Now, now, in high schools, they're moving DNA from one organism to another in high schools. It's incredible in our lifetimes what has happened with DNA. But reproduction happens at the molecular level. And DNA not only is a reproducing chemical, it's a chemical that reproduces, but it's also the chemical that stores all the knowledge that makes your cells work. Oh, the DNA, of, don't get me going, I'll be here for an hour if I start talking about DNA, but reproduction. A third thing a living thing does is it grows and it develops. See, this thing has order, but it doesn't have the ability to reproduce. This thing has order, but it's never gonna grow and it's not gonna develop. So first thing I'd say to you is, what about a sponge? Sponges grow, ha <laughs> ha, answer that one. Do sponges grow? Sure, throw them in water, they grow. But does that become sponge material? I don't mean a living sponge. I'm talking about like kind of, you know, you wash your dishes with. They, they go dry and flat and they get bigger. But are they growing? They're not taking on and making new material. So that's what I mean by growth. That's three. Let's talk about, let's get to that movement thing now. You know, sure that moved. You saw those moving. What's the difference? Well, one was using energy and one was being pulled by gravity. There's a difference. Okay, so the point here is number four, energy use. The ability to use energy is going to be a big portion of this course. How do living things use energy? You stay tuned for that. The fifth thing, response to the environment. Now, this is interesting. What does response to the environment mean? Well, I have a friend who likes to re refer to this as irritability, okay? And let me explain what that means. You see this thing here, this, this will respond to the environment. You know that metal, when it gets cold, shrinks, and when it warms, it expands. Isn't that a response to the environment? Well, of course it is. But it, there, are no, there is no stimulation to this, and th that response to the environment is merely a chemical change. The key to those worms, they did not like being pulled out. They thought they were about to be preyed upon. They were being irritated. There, was, there were nerve impulses firing around saying, predator, predator, predator. They don't know I'm gonna let them go after this lecture. All righty. And the last one, put it all together and balance it. In a, something we call, this may be a new word to you, homeostasis. You may hear that word once or twice over the course of our lectures on life 
And as we go through these 350 to 400 lectures describing life, because that's what we're going to do together, okay, we're going to describe life. And what we're going to do is we're going to describe how life is balanced, kept stationary, so that it can maintain a constant environment. That worm wanted to be back in the ground, and when I irritated it, it spent energy so that it would go down there, down into the ground. And then the summary. There has been, an, um, since the turn of the 20th century, okay, we, we have, uh, just before the turn of the 20th century, we've realized something about life. And it is the key, the single biggest thing to understanding the life that's on the planet now is understanding what came before. One of the things we have learned and what you are going to see as a central theme of any biology course is the whole idea that living things adapt evolutionarily through inheritance. Not adapt like uh, it's cold so I'm gonna get furry, all right? Doesn't work that way. If you know, if I make you naked and make you run around the North Pole, you're not gonna get furry. That's not what I'm talking about here. Okay? What I'm talking about is traits being passed on and continued in families, if you will. We call that evolutionary adaptation, and that is the theme to biology. You will never, ever understand biology until you realize the fact that what we have today is a product of what we had yesterday. So welcome to biology. I think you guys are going to have a good time.